Hey, it's Sansa right here. And I wanted to talk to you about my lies, my cover-ups, and my deception. I read an interesting comment <laughs> uh, that somebody <laughs> emailed me and it was actually pretty funny. <laughs> and inside of the email, she was telling me how many haters I had. And I was telling her, you know, how I deal with them. And she was just so surprised that so many videos on YouTube were made about me and how majority of them I've ignored. And some of them that I've responded to, I've actually deleted those videos since. So I'm telling her basically how I deal with it. And so <laughs> this is what she wrote. That's why you're my little sis, no matter what anybody says, none of us are perfect. I want you to know it doesn't matter who reaches out to me that doesn't like you. I'm not going anywhere. I don't care about no fraud shit. I don't care about rumors. I don't care about anything someone comes and tells me about you. If you are a bipolar fraudulent whore, then guess what? You're my bipolar fraudulent whore, little sis. <laughs> don't ever think I'm a fake subscriber. I see what it is, boo. These niggas that you've blocked are trying to reach out to your subbies. Desperate, shaking my damn head. I don't fall for that shit. I'm looking at them like, why the fuck are y'all so invested in destroying someone who does not affect your personal well-being? They truly act as if what you eat makes them shit. What the fuck? Just be careful with these trifling people on YouTube. I knew Angel wasn't about shit when he backpedaled and pussy popped his way out of a cap out of a collaboration with you. Fucking pussy. Afraid of the backlash from them trifling ass niggas that bash you. Well, if he truly had our backs, he would have said fuck that. I'm still collaborating with her out of respect. Continue to stay beautiful and positive, little sis. Now, <laughs> what's funny is when people tell me about the videos that they saw or the things that people have said about me and I say, I know, people are surprised that I'm like, oh, I already know that this is happening. Or I think at first they're thinking I'm going to deny that I'm seeing people do this. But no, I see it. Um, what I haven't been seeing that she brought to my attention, what I didn't know is that people that I've blocked have been trying to contact all of my subscribers, which is going to take a lot of energy, too much energy for my liking. I mean, it's 10,000 plus subscribers and none of them are fake and no, I didn't buy them. <laughs> so I don't even know where that even came from. But um, if you're being contacted and people are trying to tell you not to subscribe to me or not to, you know, stick around to me, I tell everybody it's up to you whether you want to stick around or stay on my channel or not. I never sit here and try to convince somebody who they should subscribe to or shouldn't subscribe to. All I encourage everybody to do is make sure that whatever it is that you're watching on YouTube or whatever it is that you're consuming on a daily basis, make sure that it's extremely positive and is beneficial to your life. If it's not beneficial to your life, then don't do it. Um, if you are a sadist and you laugh at other people's pain and you get onto YouTube and you're looking for that and that's your thing, do you boo. Okay, <laughs> like do you, you know what I mean? I'm not going to be around you, but you, you're welcome to do your thing. You know what I mean? And I want everybody to understand something. There's this thing called derogation of competitors. I actually heard about it from this guy um, that I watch all of the time. His name is Ty Lopez. And I watch Ty Lopez all of the time because I like what he, he teaches. But um, it was actually him who put me onto this concept. He got it from this guy named David M. Bus. Derogation of competitors. These people that are saying mean things about me on YouTube, other YouTube creators, they feel that I am their competitor and we are competing to get subscribers and views. To me, I don't feel like I'm in competition with them, but they feel that I'm some form of a threat. Okay, so they've already been coming for me and been coming for me really hard all year. So it's not nothing new I'm seeing, okay? so. Anyone who sends me an email talking to me about what they heard, trust me, I've had several hundred emails before you even <laughs> sent it to me, okay? But derogation of competitors is basically verbal signals are sometimes used to manipulate the impressions that people form about oneself and others. 
is for the goal of self-enhancement. One can manipulate impressions either by elevating oneself or by derogating others. Why do they envy you? Why will they slander you? They were talking about this DNA of happiness. Why we struggle with happiness. And one of the reasons, and Sigmund Freud talked about this in his book, Civilization is Discontent. The reason we're unhappy is because other people, a lot of assholes in this world. A lot of people leave nasty Instagram comments. What's the point, right? <laughs> you know? And the answer is found in one word, one phrase called derogation of competitors. What does derogation of competitors means? It means basically gossip and slander in evolutionary terms, meaning thousands of years ago, even hundreds, has served a purpose. It's been an effective tool. We often think that gossip and envy isn't effective. No, it's, it's been effective. Look at politics. Look at the Trump and Hillary campaign going on right now. It's pure derogation of each other's character. And trust me, as you rise up, as you do bigger things, as you start to get noticed because you break out from the mold, first thing that happens, and this, this shocks most people, People jump out of woodwork and tar start talking crap. Now, sadism. This means there is a small percentage of the population, but vocal. They're small but vocal. You can see them on YouTube. You can see them on your Facebook and your uh, Instagram. That psychologists have actually identified the fact that they delight in the pain of other people. They'll delight in your pain. So not only do they use uh, derogation of character, gossip, envy, and slander to tear you down so they can get ahead, that's more normal. Lots of people will do that. But there's a, even a worse percentage of the population that will literally tear you down because it makes them feel better. Most people can be easily swayed. So I'm the type of person that will tell you, think what you want because this time next year, month, or week, you'll probably be thinking something different. Somewhere between the truth and a lie, there's a spin. You too can spin if you look at data and filter it through your own biases and preach it like it's the gospel truth. The rationale is that it isn't really lying, just putting a bias on what is already true. So when you see these videos and they're using like things that I said and they're putting like this spin on it, it's called propaganda. And so they'll make it look to you like it's the truth. The more you hear a rumor, the more you'll buy into it, even if you're hearing one that is false. And people are eager to believe bad things about people they envy. What these people do is tell you what they think you need to know. Some parts of the truth get conveniently left out when they tell you so it makes me look like I've lied. Or some parts of their lie will be put on top of the truth so it still makes it look like I've lied. If you hear someone talking negatively about me, keep in mind that I'm not the first or last person they have spoken negatively about. And if you aren't careful, you'll be listening to them now and then become who they're talking about next. I tell the truth often and a lot of times when I hear stuff about me, I'm like, so what? For example, I'm a fraud. This is the rumor, right? I'm a fraud. And it's simply because I asked for donations. I went hard with my nonprofit this year, Block 11, and I was taking donations for the catering to the homeless event that I was doing monthly in Atlanta with this nonprofit called Simply United Together. Usually we don't take monetary donations. We take perishable goods and like items. So people would donate their time, donate their energy. They would come out and volunteer with me. And even though I have proof of that up, people are still calling me a fraud. Another thing, I have a PayPal link up asking for donations for my nonprofit. A nonprofit that I have a website up for a nonprofit that, you know, I have pictures of me out with people wearing my nonprofit logo on their t-shirt. And people are still saying that my company is a fraud. And they're like, oh, she pockets the money. She pockets the money. When I pocket some money that my YouTube viewers give me, I make a video about it. Like just recently, you guys helped me by donating money towards me so I can keep my storage unit. And a lot of people were like, you know, are you using your nonprofit's name to open your storage unit? Like a lot of people don't understand. Even my personal name, my name is a business. I put, I incorporated my name. Like my name is a business. So anything that I put under Sansa Ray Smith is a business. Anything I put under the Block 11 is a business. So a lot of people were like, do you have a tax ID? Do you have an EIN number? Because they wanted me to prove all of these things. And I'm like, yes, but here's the ticket. 
here's something I need you to understand, you guys. I don't have to prove myself at all. I tell you the things that I tell you because I want you to know. I don't have to do any of it. I could be like a person who truly does scam you and won't tell you the truth. Someone who scams you is not going to give you as much information as I do. Trust me, they're going to be hiding so much stuff. Okay, number two, am I a whore? That's a good one right there. Because to a lot of people, I probably am. I probably am because, you know, there are a lot of girls out here who had sex with one guy. And they've been considered a whore ever since. And then there's girls who've had sex with five guys. And no one would think she's a whore. I know women who are married, who are straight hoes, and no one considers them that. So it's your perspective. And I believe a lot of people have called me that because of how open I am about my sexuality. Or people believe that because a person is bisexual, that means that they're promiscuous. People believe because I talk about this one year I spent in the swingers lifestyle where I was someone's mistress. I spoke about this one year I had maybe like 2011, 2012. I talk about that whole year, all of the sexual stuff I tried in one year. And that made people coin me a hoe for the rest of my life, regardless to what activities I did before or after. You know what I'm saying? So it just depends on the person that's, that's looking at me, whether I'm a whore or not. To me, I'll never be a whore. Like I will never answer that. You could scream across the room, hey whore, and you will not get my attention. <laughs> so, to me, no. Number three, am I bipolar? And a lot of people say, hey, she must have a mental illness because one minute she's saying one thing, one minute she's doing another, one minute she's calm, one minute she's angry, one minute she's laughing. Um, the last time I checked, that's like what all people do. <laughs> like, a lot of us are fun, a lot of us tell jokes, and all of us can get angry. All of us know how to love, all of us know how to laugh, all of us have cried. All of us, you know, have our calm moments when we're chilling. Me, I show you all of who I am. You know what I mean? Like, I do not lie about who I am. I don't hide myself. So if that comes off as bipolar to the rest of the world because I am a Gemini and it, I see how that could confuse you because I'm one extreme to another, it's that cut and dry with me. It's either yes or no. It's up or down. There's no in between. Even though I have a lot of balance with my life and I try to play fair, you know, I try to see both sides of the coin. I try to understand the lives of everybody and try to be fair and put myself in other people's shoes. So if I'm talking about a specific subject, I see how some people could be thrown off by it. If I don't believe what another person believes, they'll call me crazy. If I don't say what another person wants me to say or what they would say, they call me crazy. I mean, and they do that to everybody. So it's nothing new. I'm not the type of person that's going to bash other people's beliefs. Even if they're saying something negative about me, I'm just better than that. But what I can tell you is that a lot of people that are talking about me all of the time, they're spin doctors. That's what they do. They create the lies by taking the truth in relation to my life and performing smear campaigns and entertaining propaganda. They turn the truth of a situation into a lie. I can't stress enough how capable the more skilled manipulators are of using just about any behavior imaginable to accomplish their aims. It's a marketing and public relations type of thing when they're using trickery and psychological manipulation. It's deceptive methods used to create a desired impression upon people. They manipulate the truth and create a biased interpretation. I do not have to defend myself, it's cool. I recognize the distinctive pattern of deliberately harming and humiliating others and some people. So when they do things like this, I realize that I'm not even the reason why they do things like this. People do this because they want me to be some kind of victim. They think I'm a victim because they spot what they think is weakness in me. So they come for me. But this weakness that they think they see is actually kindness. And they don't even know how to interpret what they see. People spread rumors when there's uncertainty. People spread rumors when they feel anxiety because they want a clear sense of understanding someone. So instead of doing the research that they need to understand someone, they rather start a rumor. They want other people to be informed. They want to be the one that blows the whistle on someone else 
You know, they want to be the snitch is really the term for it. They want to be the snitch. Like, say, for instance, I was doing something bad and they exposed it to the world. Basically, they just a snitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and they take pride in snitching. That's all. But honestly, a lot of the stuff that people have made up about me is just lies and, you know, their perception. And, you know, they can perceive what they want to perceive. Um, people spread rumors because they actually believe it even even if they actually believe it that does not mean that it's true it just means that they believe it you know what i mean a lot of people spread rumors when it helps their self-image they want to feel good about themselves they want to be the one that knows what's going on in the world because being that person makes them feel special they want to be that person that feel makes them feel good people will spread rumors to help their social status they want to have social ties with users and people on the internet and all kinds of stuff. If keeping me as a topic of conversation using nasty rumors and lies as a form of entertainment and that will help you with your anxiety and boredom, okay, go for it. I'm here to help you in any way I can. I just want everybody to have a happy life. You understand? So it doesn't bother me as much. I, I remember... Um, for a second it bothered me for a little bit because I felt like people were trying to get too close into my personal life like I don't like when people try to pull too much information that they're not supposed to even be talking about because we as people we have boundaries you know like you'll tell your friends certain things but certain things they can't speak on they're not allowed to speak on so as I'm sitting here and I'm putting myself in a public forum and on a platform of course immediately i'm going to become a target of all kinds of things so it isn't that and no one is exempt to this we all go through this and that's why a lot of people get onto youtube and they speak what they speak but don't they don't let anybody know their name they don't let anybody see their face because they know because they don't want to be a target they don't want to be the person that everybody looks at and comes straight for so I just want to let you guys know, yes, I know about all of the rumors. <laughs> yes, I know that people are coming for my subscribers. These same people have tried to come for my family. They've contacted my children. They've tried to find anybody I know on social media and just started talking about me. And anybody that's my friend or anybody that has a um, strong mind or knows better rejects them immediately. But like I said in the beginning of the video, People can be easily swayed. That's why I don't rely solely on the friendship of people. I rely on God because God is my strength. The universe is my strength. And that's the only thing that has always been consistent in my life. When I can't rely on people, I rely on God. And God is doing everything. Everything that's happened to me, all of the things that people are saying about me, that's all a part of God's works and God's intentions to get me to exactly where I need to be. Because for every utter, every time somebody says my name, that's still promotion. Thanks for watching, guys. Have vision and stay focused. Namaste.